Hey guys, let's talk about my favorite tarot cards. Let me get my giant rider weight. <laughs> Starla. Sorry, guys. This little critter. What? Okay. So, we're going to talk about my favorite tarot cards. I'm going to be using the giant Rider Waite tarot deck because. When I'm talking about a specific card, it's just easier to pull it out <laughs> and show you in gigantic form. Um, so, <clears throat> uh, I guess I'll just go through and pick the ones that I really, really love. Um, the ones that just really inspire me. So the High Priestess was the first one that I really was attracted to when I first started my tarot journey. I wanted to be just like the High Priestess. I wanted to withhold all of her secrets. Um, I used to sleep with one of her tarot, one of the tarot cards of her under my pillow, literally. Um, I just wanted to absorb all of the High Priestess energy and all of her just amazingness, all of her intuition, all of um, everything that just she's about is what I wanted. So High Priestess would go definitely as one of my top tarot cards that I love um, for that reason. She's all about intuition. She's all about the third eye. And she's just powerful. Like, I wanted to be like her as a reader. The Hermit card is another favorite of mine. Um, I love the idea of looking inward. I love the idea of self-healing. I love the idea of self-love. Um, I feel like that's a lot of the energy that I like to bring out in myself um, as well as in my clients and in the kind of readings that I do for my clients. So I really, really, really enjoy the hermit's vibration. I think that um, we all have a little bit of the hermit within us. We all have a little bit of that need for spending time, some quiet time at home rather than going out and socializing and being crazy. Like I know I love to socialize. I love to have my time with my friends and whatnot. But at the same time, I also really, really, really cherish being at home, doing nothing, having little to no expectations, little to no responsibilities, <laughs> and just spending a lot of time. I do spend a lot of time by myself. Sometimes not by choice, but other times for the most part, it is by choice. So <laughs> the Hermit would be another card um, that is ultimately my favorite. Um, I also like the Wheel of Fortune. There's certain Wheel of Fortune cards. I believe the Wild Unknown is the main one that I really love the Wheel of Fortune. I love the way it looks. I just, I don't know, there's just something about it. It gets me feeling like, it's one, it's a good luck card, but also it just makes me feel like, cool, times are turning, like the wheel is turning. We're gonna start seeing some cool stuff happen. We're gonna start seeing some changes taking place. There's growth and development here. Um, it's also a 10 card, which is like the end of a cycle. So I just, I like to see the wheel of fortune. Um, it, it usually makes me happy and excited when I see it pop up, but it was stalking me at one point. And so <laughs> stalking you is maybe not the best thing because it usually indicates that something major is gonna be taking place. <sighs> Some green drink. <laughs> mm. I like the star card. I feel like the star card is gentle, that kind of energy. Um, She's maybe not my ultimate, ultimate favorite, but I do enjoy the star card. The moon, though, is my absolute favorite. Um, if I had to pick my number one in the tarot, it would definitely be the moon. Um, I feel like the moon card um, symbolizes the cackling moon. I also feel like my moon card um, talks about, it, do, it does talk about the illusions of life 
It talks about your shadow, the shadow aspect of your life, the secrets. Um, it's the mysterious path ahead. It's also your intuition. It's womenly cycles. It's like your menstrual cycle. It's um, your, it's, it's everything to me. It's everything. So the moon to me um, embodies a lot of that. I also see this as like the little the little crabby rising out of the waters of emotions and and, and all of that your psyche. Um, I just see that totally representing like your spiritual awakening process. So <laughs> I really love the moon. I really really love the moon. I like the Knight of Pentacles. The Knight of Pentacles is my signifier card for my husband, for one thing. Um, so I love him. So I like the, <laughs> the Knight of Pentacles. Um, but I also like the Knight of Pentacles because to me, this card represents a lot of patience and planning. Um, this represents just a lot of withholding your purpose and, and you're holding it in the palm of your hand and you're literally like making amazingness happen. You're seeing what, what potential you have in the future, but you're also carefully embarking on that journey, right? Um, I'm also super attracted to the fact that he's sitting upon the black horse and it's not a white horse. White horses to me are like, like purity, but the black horse is like your true self. So I don't know. I just, I, that's how I see the Knight of Pentacles. I just, I really love him in that way. <laughs> Believe it or not, I like the Two of Swords. Um, the Two of Swords to me is, to me, it's a good contemplation. It's a deep, deep card. Um, it's also kind of facing those fears and those blocks. So you realize that you do have things blocking your psyche. You have things blocking your heart. Um, it's a protection card also, but I feel like when this card pops up, especially if I were to pull it for myself, I would see it as um, a need to kind of open up um, and a need to be vulnerable for once. So it's kind of like a good warning sign card or just like a checking in kind of a card. Not all of that, you know? Um, I really, really love the Six of Swords. This one is a big one for me because it was it was always the energy that I was always trying to embody with myself. Um, staying away from toxic people, relationships, um, environments, people, people. <laughs> um, I was always seeing myself as that drifter. I was always leaving jobs to, you know, try something new. I was always, I wasn't, I would never leave relationships. I was never really a relationship hopper, but I was a, a, a job hopper. <laughs> so I would stay at one job and then, you know, go to the next and go to the next. And I was building up my experience and, and all of that with it. But at the same time, it was also just kind of escaping when I wasn't feeling connected with the people I was working with. I was just kind of like, okay, I'm outgrowing you. It's time for me to move on. Um, but I also see the Six of Swords as a need for personal escape, you know, when we need some quiet time, when we need to escape the the crap of the day. Um, this is like the retreat card to me. So I find so much peace with that one. Um, I like the Ten of Swords simply because it's a badass looking card. <laughs> it's so morbid and I live for that so I I don't really I mean I find the connection with the, the ten of swords at times but I think I just like the way it looks so <laughs> if I could pull a tarot card that I just love the way it looks because it's just so crazy the ten of swords would be that card I freaking love the queen of swords I think out of all of the queens um, I really enjoy the queen of swords the most because it's the one queen that I have the hardest time embodying the energy of. I do feel lately I have been more of a queen of swords. Um, I think it comes with growth and comfort, like feeling confident with yourself, being able to speak your truth and speak up and whatnot. But um, I do have difficulties embracing those energies on a day-to-day -day basis. So I do feel like I am attracted to the queen of swords, but it's the one card that I do find difficulty being most like. Um, I feel like I'm a natural Queen of Cups, <laughs> but I don't always want to resonate with the Queen of Cups, you know? Like, I want to resonate with the one card that I have a hard time being like, because it's to me, it's growth. 
I really like the Six of Cups. Um, it reminds me of my, my brother. It reminds me of past loved ones being surrounded by my spirit guides. It reminds me of the nostalgic moments, those like when you put on a, a certain song and it just makes you think about that certain memory or that person or that that time in your past that just makes you feel really good and happy, that's the Six of Cups. I also like the Eight of Cups. Um, I see the Eight of Cups as a real strength of walking away from what, from what no longer serves you. So very similar to the Six of Swords. Um, I don't know, I just like the image of it also. You know, you're walking away from these cups, you're walking away from whatever the, these cups reveal or what they represent in your life. Um, I love that the moon has like this no bullshit look on his face, like don't bug me. <laughs> Um, I just like the essence of this card. There's something about it that's really comforting. It's probably also because this is such a Pisces card, in my opinion. Pisces, we're known for retreating when we just don't want to deal with stuff. We're, we're big escape escapist type people. Um, we live in the fantasy most of the time rather than the reality. And so I totally see the Eight of Cups as that. <laughs> so probably why I'm so attracted to it. And then out of the wands suit, I am super, super attracted to the Eight of Wands. I remember when I was first learning the tarot, the Eight of Wands was one of those cards that caught my caught my eye. Um, I think it was because it was telling me to move forward, like move forward with this idea, move forward with this path. You're gonna be happy. You're gonna you're gonna love it. Um, to me, the Eight of Wands is a is a major reminder to always aim forward, to aim towards the future, to have goals, to take action, to be aggressive, to be assertive. Um, it's a reminder of that to me, at least, because I do have the tendency to be a little bit procrastinative, like I procrastinate or... Um, or sometimes I'm not quick to action because I overthink things too much. So I feel like the Eight of Wands is a good reminder for that. And that's about it, you guys. Those are probably my favorite tarot cards in the entire deck. Um, I like the way that the Fool looks. I think that, you know, I'm just super attracted to the Fool because that's usually the first card that you see when you're looking at a tarot deck. Um, but those cards that I showed you guys are probably my most favorite out of the entire tarot um and so yeah those are my favorite cards that's why i like them tell me what your favorites are and why you like them and let's start a dialogue in the comment section bye loves